ප්‍රදර්ශනම චෝදනාව වන්නේ එම සැත්කම් අතරතුර මවුවරුන් වඳ භාවයට පත් කිරීමයි. ශ්‍රෝණයගල පිහිටි ඔහුගේ නිවසේදී ඔහු අත්අඩංගුවට ගෙන තිබෙනවා. Sri Lanka's 22 million people get their news from hundreds of sources which includes television, radio and newspapers but also news websites and social media. At a glance, we have lots of media. But is there enough good journalism? Good journalism means verified information is presented with enough context and balance without misleading audiences and without spreading panic or hatred. This is the story of a completely fabricated story that shocked and angered many people until a few good journalists decided to probe further and found the truth. Some people believe everything the politicians say. The media led the way and called pregnant women, their husbands, doctors and others to the scene. It was absurd. I too was in a misunderstanding first. I feel ashamed now when I look back. It was media rubbish. Dr. Veerabandara told the nurses, what are you talking about? You must not tell these things. Then he taught them what to say. He asked them to say that Dr. Shafri sterilized women. He meant performing cesarean section surgeries fast and advised the nurses to say that it was suspicious. Nurses repeated what he said. To this day, what confuses me is what motivated them to act this way. And if, as CID said, they did falsify these documents and as such, as why they would actually do that. Sri Lanka had enjoyed a decade of peace. When the Easter Sunday terror attacks took place on 21st of April 2019, suicide bombers targeted three Christian churches and three tourist hotels, killing over 250 and injuring more than 500. Because the attackers were radicalized Muslims, there were heightened tensions in the days and the weeks that followed. Moderates from all faiths were appealing for calm and restraint. Then, just a month after the attacks, a terrifying news appeared in Divaina, a privately owned Sinhala newspaper. The Divaina newspaper published news on 23rd May 2019 that evidence had been exposed of a doctor linked to Tawhid Jamaat who had sterilized 4,000 Sinhala Buddhist women. The news story further said that investigations had been underway to arrest the doctor. As journalists, we monitor news on media and investigate them. When breaking news is posted by a single newspaper, every journalist is keen on it. That happened here too. When I saw the headline, I was curious because the doctor was a Muslim. The story did not mention the word Muslim, but went with Tawhid Jamaat. They alluded that the doctor was a Muslim. The term Tawhid Jamaat immediately reminded me of the Easter Sunday terrorist attacks launched by an organization with that name, which was led by Zaharan Hashim. When that name is mentioned, everyone thinks that the doctor may be linked to the Zaharan terror gang. People tend to think that he had performed the planned sterilization of 4,000 Sinhala Buddhist women. Journalist Tharindu was naturally curious. How did all other media miss such a story? Can any doctor secretly sterilize 4,000 women while delivering their babies at a public hospital? He wanted to get to the bottom of it. So, as a good journalist, he turned to the primary sources. He went to the hospital concerned and also talked to the police. What he heard from the police made him suspicious. The sources available to verify this news were the police and the relevant hospital. The director of Kurnayagala Hospital had already conducted a press conference and announced this. The only source we could contact after that was the police media spokesperson, Ruan Gunasekara. He denied knowledge of any such information. I requested him to check whether there was a complaint in Kurnayagala about this. He called the superintendent of police in charge of Kurnayagala division and told me that there was no such information. He told me that an investigation was underway regarding the assets amassed by a doctor at the Kurnagal hospital, but it was not related to the sterilization. Then I thought that the story in the Divina newspaper could be a fabrication. The original newspaper didn't mention the name of the doctor, 
but within hours, the name had been disclosed on Facebook by a medical academic. The story was picked up by TV news and went viral on social media. That's because the gynecologist implicated, Dr. Shafi Shehabdeen, worked at the Kurunagala Teaching Hospital. We too were terrified because anyone would be concerned about racist sterilization. We wanted to know the truth. When the news of sterilization spread, mothers queued to get screened for sterilization. Some mothers complained about subfertility after the first delivery. Have only the mothers whose cesarean section is done by Dr. Shafi become subfertile after the first delivery. How many might have experienced the same? However, the mothers were anxious when the news was that the doctor had blocked fallopian tubes during the cesarean section. Mothers queued to be screened to check whether they had been subjected to sterilization. It is their right. The allegation against Dr. Shafi was that during cesarean surgery to deliver babies, the mother's fallopian tubes were cut tied or blocked to permanently prevent future pregnancies. Hundreds of anxious women turned up at the Kurunagal Hospital saying that they have not conceived another baby since then. Some politicians and Buddhist monks also turned up at the scene making various claims. It soon became a media circus. What did the media do? They aired video footage of women queuing to get screened to know whether they had been sterilized by Dr. Shafi. Politicians and religious leaders, although they knew next to nothing about medicine, involved in this. The media aired these news stories every day. Some private TV channels kept on interviewing and showing anxious women flocking to the Kurunagal Hospital, fearing that they too have been secretly sterilized. Such sensational reporting irked many serious journalists. Um, so thereafter, as editorial, we being highly concerned about um, what was being reported. Uh, our editor-in-chief at the time, Darisha Bastians, she um, assigned various reporters to sort of cover various angles of this story. Um, at the time, I was um, covering the beat. Uh, I was the key police reporter at um, the Sunday Observer. So my areas of interest was basically the police investigation and um, also what was being uncovered thereafter. The day after the initial report appeared in the Divina newspaper, Dr. Shafi was arrested by the police. At the time, Tharidu and Maneshka worked for two rival media houses. But as journalists, they both wanted to separate facts from so much hype surrounding allegations against Dr. Shafi. Dr. Shafi was arrested by the Kurunagala police on 24th May, following which we investigated this further. We met Dr. Shafi's wife Imara at her house and inquired regarding claims of sterilization of 4,000 women. We then met the director of the hospital. We questioned thoroughly how such sterilizations could be done. He categorically said Dr. Shafi had somehow done it without providing a medical explanation. He told the story only from his side. He then asked an assistant to accompany us to the ward where Dr. Shafi worked. We inquired about Dr. Shafi from the nurses and they said he was a kind and committed doctor who was friendly with them. When Tharindu was talking to nurses at the Kurunagal Hospital who had directly worked under Dr. Shafi, the director of the hospital intervened and directed them to implicate Dr. Shafi. This added to Tharindu's suspicions. <laughs> Suddenly, Dr. Veera Bandara, the hospital director, rushed in and said to the nurses, What are you talking about? You must not tell these things. Then he taught them what to say. He asked him to say that Dr. Shafi conducted sterilizations. He meant performing caesarean surgeries very quickly and advised the nurses to say that it was suspicious. The nurses repeated what he said. Not all the mothers who had come to the hospital were unable to conceive after the first delivery. Some had complaints about back pain. Some were afraid because they had undergone surgery. 
by Dr. Shafi. When I investigated further, I understood that Dr. Shafi as well as his wife worked at the Kurunagal Hospital. Further, the wife of DIJ Kitsiri Jailath was also a doctor in the same hospital. This police officer investigated the case. The wife of the magistrate of the area was also a doctor at the Kurunagal Hospital. Dr. Shafi, together with several others, purchased a building in the middle of the Kurunagal town. The Singhala Trade Association of the city expressed concerns that it would be a Muslim invasion. We found out not all the incidents had been behind the allegations of sterilization. Dr. Safi Mandagalaki and Hethu and Ethigil Apitaranjuna. After interviewing many different people from both inside and outside the hospital, Thaindu realized what lay beneath. There was a lot of racially based jealousy and animosity towards Dr. Shafi, who was a popular and successful doctor who just happened to be a Muslim. It looked like the prevailing anti-Muslim sentiments were used to target and vilify him. By this time, most media in Sri Lanka had turned Dr. Shafi into a national villain. His side was never heard in any media reporting. It was a trial by media. And suddenly, Tharindu's own editors didn't want to publish anything that contradicted the vilification. After that, my newspaper refrained from publishing the stories related to the incident and I decided to quit my job in the Lanka Deepa newspaper. Media industry in Sri Lanka has limited job opportunities. So it was probably not easy for Tharindu to walk away from his secure job at Sri Lanka's highest selling newspaper. His commitment to good journalism is exemplary. Maneshka was luckier because the Sunday Observer's editors stood by her reporters as long as they verified all information and produced balanced stories. Maneshka and colleagues focused on how local area police had violated procedure in their haste to arrest Dr. Shaf. I think the key factor in people believing this article was because the reporter had mentioned that the information uh, was received from the police, which sort of gave wings to the article. And another institution we kind of focused on was the National Police Commission uh, because these revelations in court on June 27th, there was a lot of focus on the behavior of the National Police Commission as well. After the investigations, the CID director had recommended, had reported to the acting IGP CD Vikramaratna that these two officers had acted against the police disciplinary code. Uh, but of course, later we know that uh, I, the IGP, based on this information, had written to the National Police Commission requesting uh, and rather recommending that these two police officers be transferred. Um, however, we reported how the National Police Commission, despite the recommendations, first ordered for the transfers, but then thereafter stopped the transfers for reasons unknown. Um, this sort of created an air of confusion and also people started looking at the National Police Commission in a different way and wondered why that why they would act in such a way. We also reported that quoted on the transfers of these two officers thereafter, which the NPC ordered for sort of a public outcry. Sandalza also took steps to sort uh, to um, report on how uh, one police office officer in this who was mentioned by the CID as having falsified these documents was promoted later that year. The police chief himself was unhappy with how the local police have investigated. He handed it over to the Police Criminal Investigation Department, or CID. They probed deep and found that Dr. Shafi had no connections with any terror group. So the doctor was released on bail. The CID investigated and reported that the doctor had no connection with any terror organization. They said that the charges filed under the Prevention of Terrorism Act had been withdrawn, but the case of damaging the organs of women would be investigated further. Dr. Shafi was released on bail. It was revealed that the doctor had been arrested only because of the Divina newspaper story without any other evidence. The present IGP Chandana Vikramaratna was the acting IGP then. He assigned the CID to investigate the case. The CID took 
took Dr. Shafi under their custody and held him under detention orders for investigation. CID questioned a large number of persons and it was revealed that the Kurnagala DIG and the superintendent of police, Mahinda Disanayak, had fabricated 10 statements to arrest the doctor. The statements were recorded after Dr. Shafi was arrested and backdated. <laughs> The police criminal investigators found that Dr. Shafi had not performed any sterilizations on patients. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's law enforcement and intelligence agencies all confirmed that the doctor had no links to any extremist or terrorist groups. When they informed court about these findings, most of the media did not report about it. Instead, most media kept repeating the fabricated claim of a Muslim doctor conducting secret sterilizations on Sinhalese women. The whole experience left Tarindu seriously disillusioned about his peers. There is a conspiracy behind this. Although the media may commit errors, blunders of this scale cannot be allowed. Media can apologize, but the media code of conduct explains how exactly it should be done. None of them have been followed. The media did not even cover the truth that was exposed later. Instead, it repeatedly reported that Dr. Shafi had conducted sterilization. Look at the size of the first B report the CID submitted when reporting facts. These are statements recorded by the police from complainant women. All of them said they had complained because of the newspaper and the television vision stories. They were not voluntary complainants. These are the statements recorded from the doctors and none of them say that Dr. Shafi had crushed fallopian tubes. Without considering these facts, some media still report that Dr. Shafi damaged fallopian tubes of women. This lie is so fixed in the minds of people that some women have complained that Dr. Shafi in fact squeezed their fallopian tubes during normal deliveries. <laughs> The media fabrication was devastating for Dr. Shafi and his young family. Their human rights were violated blatantly and the media ethics were shattered to pieces. I was concerned about the fact that Dr. Shafi's wife is also a medical doctor. Their children learned in the same school as my kids. They could not attend school and their parents had to find other schools for them. Dr. Shafi's wife could not report duty in her workstation. The family had to hide and change their safe house from time to time. Mrs. Shafi had to undergo severe hardship alone due to this fake news and its ramifications. The media keeps demanding accountability from everybody in society. But who keeps the media accountable? There is a media ethics code formulated by the Editors Guild of Sri Lanka. And it very clearly says, and I quote, every reasonable attempt should be made by editors and individual journalists to verify the accuracy of reports prior to publication. End of quote. Dr. Shafi's story was not based on any evidence. Instead, it was entirely driven by various claims and fabrications made by people who didn't like him or who were jealous of him. And even when criminal investigations reveal this, most of the media did not change their reporting and they never corrected themselves. The media is responsible for this gross misconduct. The media damaged the good name of the medical profession, which was highly respected by people. After this allegation, people were afraid to enter a theatre for surgery. They suspect whether their organs, such as kidneys, may be removed. The media planted an opinion in society that doctors were corrupt. Media formatted our minds against Dr. Shafi. Both audio and visual media engaged in this. Media is the way we know the news. We listen to or watch the news to know the issues in the country. The media showed us Dr. Shafi's issue as the biggest problem in the country. The news spread countrywide. Dr. Shafi's sterilization became gossip. The media is definitely responsible for the situation. They can make black white and white black. This is the creation of a dark spot.
Parindu obtained the Kurunagal Hospital's official statistics for the number of cesarean operations where Dr. Shafi was involved. The actual numbers were significantly less than what the Divina report had claimed. The Divina newspaper reported that Dr. Shafi had sterilized 4,000 Sinhala Buddhist women. That meant he had performed 8,000 caesarean sections and 4,000 of them are of Sinhala Buddhist women. However, the statistics provided by the hospital director himself stated that the total number of caesarean section surgeries performed by Dr. Shafi was 4,372 altogether, far less than the 8,000 initially claimed. Out of these 4,000 operations, only 3,479 were of Sinhala women. The number of Muslim women was 860, while 33 of the women were Tamils. The fake news was planted without considering any of these facts. When so many had already vilified Dr. Shafi, it took extraordinary courage for one of his patients to publicly speak for him. I underwent three cesarean sections under Dr. Shafi and I have a responsibility to appear for the doctor's innocence. Therefore, I did the only thing I could do, that is giving evidence in a case against Dr. Shafi. I told them that I had not faced any difficulty during delivery and I had a social responsibility to say it. I think Having focused on mainly how the police acted and behaved, I think it's to this day what confuses me is what motivated them to act this way. And as if, as CID said, they did falsify these documents and as such, as why they would actually do that. And I still can't understand that. And it kind of remains as as, as to what motivated them, it kind of still is a mystery. In December 2021, the Ministry of Health decided to reinstate Dr. Shafi after having sent him on compulsory leave for over a two and a half years. In June 2022, the Ministry paid him his salary arrears for the period, which totaled 2.67 million rupees. But at the time of making this film, in August 2022, police has failed to file charges against him. He is still on bail and still needs to clear his name, tarnished by media fabrications and false allegations. Tharindu now has his own media startup where he goes looking for evidence in every story. Manashka has joined a fact-checking organization, still investigating various claims, including those appearing in the media. The police did not pressurize me or prevent me from reporting about Dr. Shafi. However, I was obstructed by my own media institution and my fellow journalists. People as well as staff accused us of backing Muslims. Some editorial staff members directed the provincial reporters to call the editor-in-chief and demand to stop reporting this. The Sunday Lanka Deepa editor-in-chief Aryan and the Dobagahavatta influenced the management to sack me. I continued reporting this and when the newspaper rejected to publish my stories, I posted them on social media. There was pressure even to remove that content. Even on social media, people accused me that I was backing Muslims against Sinhalis. Our neighbors also spread such stories. However, after several years, now it has been proven that we were always right. More than three years have passed since the Shafi controversy erupted. To this date, no journalist and no media house has been held accountable. And nobody in media has apologized for what they did. Can our media go on like this? without any accountability. Media ethics require journalists and their media houses to verify information before they publish. And if honest mistakes are made, when that's realized, they must correct themselves. What happens when media knowingly publishes distortions, disinformation, or as in this case, complete fabrications? The big lesson in Dr. Shafi's case is that we need a media accountability mechanism in Sri Lanka.